Hi, I'm Elizabeth Thompson from USGBC here at Greenville 2023. And today we get to talk with Ben Myers from BXP, formerly Boston Properties. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about your role? Sure, very, very happy to be here at Greenville. So I am the head of sustainability at BXP. We're a public equity REIT. We own, manage, and develop premier workplace, including a portfolio of life science, office, residential, and retail. We have about 55 million square feet in our portfolio in Boston, New York, San Francisco, DC, LA, and Seattle. I know that's a mouthful. And we have an active development pipeline of around 4 million feet. So I oversee all of our E, S, and G reporting and disclosure and focus on the implementation of initiatives around E and the coordination of S and G related initiatives also across the company. That's great. That's a, that's a very wide scope and perfect for Greenville 2023. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how the work that you do is informed by your stakeholders? Sure. Our work is very much informed by our stakeholders, including our clients. We call them clients, our tenants. Uh, it is informed by policymakers, so local governments and officials and the community, what they want. Uh, as an active developer, you have to be very aware of what the community wants and needs. It's informed by our investors, uh, particularly large institutional investors here in the U.S. and in Europe. And then it's, it's also informed by our employees who want to work for a company that's doing well by doing good. And we're seeing more and more of our employees embrace our social in initiatives like our employee resource groups and our environmental initiatives like what we're doing on climate action and how we're moving towards carbon neutral operations by 2025. That's super exciting. Carbon neutral operations by 2025 is just around the quarter. Can you give us some more detail about how you're working toward that? Sure. So it really is centered on energy efficiency, electrification, and renewable energy procurement. So 2025, as you said, is here, but we've been benchmarking performance and working on this since 2008. So from 2008 through 2025, we will reduce our site energy use intensity 33%. So first and foremost, we're going to cut the amount of energy we use by about a third. Secondarily, we're procuring renewable energy. We just did a very large VPPA. It's our first PPA for new additional renewable power. It's 21 megawatts of power that will be added to the grid as a result of that transaction. And we're building out renewables across our portfolio on rooftops and parking garages and surface parking and generating about 13 megawatts, we predict, by 2025, 8 megawatts today. So moving forward, increasing our renewable energy generation on site. Electrification, I mentioned, very important part of our strategy. What we're building today is not relying on natural gas-fired central boiler plants. We're moving towards heat pump designs, air source heat pumps, water source heat pumps, with high COPs to make sure it's resource efficient electrification in our new development process. That's awesome. Um, can you tell us, so those things help all of the energy that's being used to be a green energy source? And I know you're also doing really exciting things around commissioning to make sure that buildings are as efficient as they can be and um, last and are durable and have lower risks. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So I mentioned the role of policymakers in local governments. And yeah. so we are in Boston with Birdo 2.0, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Budo, their building performance standard. New York has its infamous or Local Law 97, yeah. that was a, a Freudian slip on infamous. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is a very positive development, I think, that we're thinking about existing buildings and carbon and what can we do to curtail an emission source that represents nearly two-thirds of emissions in many cities across the United States. So in preparation for building performance standards, we are proactively doing a very robust retro commissioning process checking all the points in the building, making sure dampers open and close, making sure the sequence of operations is operating like it should and hasn't been overridden in the BMS, and then looking for projects that we can address, like insulation in real time in the field, other projects that we may be able to address through operating budgets, like programming and hardware and controls, and then larger CapEx investments we can make to reduce on-site consumption of energy. Again, a third of our goal is being met through energy efficiency. Retro commissioning is a way to wring out that bit of conservation that remains. That's awesome. Um, and you've talked to about how sort of the boardroom to the boiler room, and that the commissioning helps to make the ideals that you have in the boardroom come through to the boiler room or 
the more energy efficient version of that now. Um, are there things where you see uh, structures of communicating or structures of um, talking about how power is, is uh, regulated that you could speak to that other people might be able to apply to their portfolios. Sure, I love saying boardroom to the boiler room. <laughs> I'm trying to say chairperson to the chiller plant there we go. because we're going all electric, but it yeah. doesn't have the same ring to it. Yeah, I think governance is crucial to the success of any company's sustainability and impact initiatives. Yeah. So having a clear reporting line to the president, CEO, having a board that's engaged. We have a dedicated board level sustainability committee, having teams from operations that represent mm -hmm. senior decision making in all of our regions to talk about what we're doing around sustainability, what's working, what isn't, how do we scale best practices. The governance absolutely matters. And through an effective governance system that includes goals for individuals on sustainability outcomes, again, executive level goals that inform comp, we, we are able to, I think, align across the company, and we are a big company, so, so to have the goals, to have the clear statement and purpose, we can make progress on, on a variety of initiatives, like our energy deal, which required buy-in from not one or two individuals, but dozens of individuals to get that sign. That's awesome. And then you guys also have participated with LEED rating systems for a long time, and you have a new LEED Zero project. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, over half of our portfolio is certified at the highest LEED gold and platinum levels. 87% of our portfolio is certified either LEED, Fitwell, or Energy Star. Those certifications do matter to our investors. We get questions around our certification activity, why we're doing it. One project in particular I'd highlight, 140 Kendrick Street in Needham, Massachusetts, we converted to a net zero building. And our mantra on that project was build tight, ventilate right, energize with sunlight. So we're producing more energy on site than we'll consume on an annual basis. We shrunk the loads through better insulation of the thermal envelope, walls and roof. We cut the gas connection to that building, fully electrified our air handling units on the roof and added a very advanced heat recovery system called Superblock. We will be certifying that project under the LEED Zero framework and we're currently going through M&V. The client who I should mention here, Wellington Management, was a huge part of our journey. And I'll be speaking about tomorrow co-piloting net zero outcomes with clients here at Greenbuild because it is so important that clients buy in. And, and what does that look like? Well, it's a green lease that is focused on net zero. So this is our first net zero green lease. We set clear limits to plug load and lighting power density. We have requirements and obligations to achieve a LEED zero certification. We had obligations to deliver solar on site and produce renewable energy. And, and we did it in partnership with Wellington where they agreed to pay for part of the premium costs associated with the work as part of their base rent. So it was truly a collaboration on vision, but also on economics to make everything work out for the project. Right, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that story. We look forward to your session tomorrow. Very much looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ben.